The flying V, yes, the flying V. That's exactly what it is. It's a piece of rebar, hammer flat, sharpened on all sides, that flies through the air. With the help of a human arm, of course. So I think the first question you're probably going to be asking is why? Well, because since getting an anvil and a large forge, I'm now able to make shapes out of metal I've never been able to make before. At least without getting a ridiculously sized piece of steel that costs an arm and a leg. Now making this on the other hand costs only the price of propane and some actual pain because I cut myself at least twice making this stupid thing. I think it's pretty self-explanatory at this point. Take a piece of hardenable rebar, which by the way is a rarity and should probably be framed and cherished in its own right, and hammer it flat. Make a bend in it and off to the grinder to fix all of my forging mistakes. Now it should probably be mentioned that at this point right here, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to put bevels on all four sides of this thing. So I kind of awkwardly clamped it into my really awesome bevel jig, which by the way I'll be doing a video on relatively soon because this thing is super awesome. And I kind of just grinded, grinded, ground away. Now because I did a really crappy job forging this thing, uh, especially forging it completely flat because I really didn't think that I'd be finishing it at any point in time, uh, grinding the bevels was kind of tricky, but again with the help of that grinding jig it actually put really uh, decently clean bevels on it considering the thickness variations. Now as soon as I was done with the bevel jig I just started freehand grinding because there's absolutely no way to clamp this thing in any type of jig and get that radius on there. So. Uh, just kind of cleaned up the whole thing freehand and it was really ugly by the time I was done. But I do have a way to hide some of these flaws which you'll see in a second. So here I'm just kind of like filing down that crack that you see. That's actually not a crack, it's just where the fold happened. Then we'll go ahead and light up the forge and do the heat treating. I already normalized this one time before the grinding and now I'm going to go ahead and normalize it two more times and then do the quench. So I just wrapped a uh, piece of wire around the, uh, the flying V. Uh, that way I can get a nice even heat without having um, a large mass like tongs or pliers sitting on it um, pushing it back and forth because all sides of this need to be hardened and you don't want to have um, a large piece of steel sucking the heat out of it while you're trying to heat it up. Now the last two pieces of rebar that I uh, heat treated off of this same uh, piece, I quenched in water. Uh, this piece I quenched in oil and I don't think it got as hard as the other two pieces. So, um, I mean it got hard enough to hold some kind of an edge, but it's not as hard as I would like it to be. I mean, come on, it's, it's rebar. It's not um, 1080 or uh, 1084 high carbon steel. So, it's pretty good for what it is, I think. Now I threw this in my uh, tempering oven for like 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Um, it probably did uh, nothing. I mean the piece barely got up to 400 degrees by the time I took it back out. Um, after thinking about it, I didn't want to uh, take too much hardness out of this piece because it barely got hard in the first place. And then it's back to the grinder with an 80 grit ceramic belt to put an edge on this or four, wait is that, one, two, three, four, yeah, four edges on this thing. I had to count them. I'm just using my cool mist here. That thing makes a huge difference um, in time savings. You basically don't have to dip this in water at all, that thing. Uh, you don't have to worry about overheating the edge whatsoever. It's just super awesome, huge time saver. And then to hide all of the grind line mistakes, it's onto the small wheel to put a textured fake hammered finish on this. And I realized that we could have left the actual hammered finish on this, but because the grind lines were absolutely terrible, I wanted to hide them. So we hit them with the small wheel texturing device. Then I hit it quick on the uh, surface conditioning belt and then dunked it in acid to, again, help hide some of those flaws. Uh, acid's a good way to help hide flaws because it covers stuff up and it eats away uh, some of the softer pieces of steel versus harder pieces of steel and it leaves kind of an older looking finish on the blade. And it's just another method to help you hide flaws 
uh, in my opinion, or to put a different kind of look on this. And then back to the surface conditioning belt to uh, take off some of that finish and uh, help remove some of the burr that was left on there by the 80 grit belt. And then finally stropping it on a green compound strop. Uh, I didn't make this thing too ridiculously sharp because I already cut myself on it, uh, if I remember correctly, at least two times. And it's pretty much done. Let's see what it can do. And there it is guys, the finished piece. I should probably mention that I was not throwing this thing that hard. I was primarily focused on hitting the target rather than uh, throwing it as hard as I could. And uh, you can see that this thing is no joke. It's not to be uh, played around or messed around with. And uh, it would be nice to have like 50 of them. Or one of them that was much, much bigger. So if you like this video, please like it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. See ya.